So once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Human Trill Leg 2 Zanziar. I believe this is our 8th session. Neither of us are feeling very well. Uh, no one. What's that? Session. I can't assume you're saying. Uh, but we're not feeling so hot. But we're excited nonetheless because all is revealed now. I mean, we know we know that Chopper is Odrix the Chancellor. We know he's trying to recover the Dwarven towns with Derek the Dragon Boy. Uh, we know he's trying to get some iron mines. We know that Sweet Pete is Prince Eric Fotland of Hagen. And that all she has to do is finish conquering Hagen and not lose Largos. And she's maybe one. We know about the High Priest of Adalsis and how he's snug bug and how all he has to do is find two pieces of the staff of Worm Mandalus and he's one. We know about Kevin O and how he's become a ghost and how all he, we don't really know what he has to do but I suspect all he has to do is kill and he's one. We know that Zack Butt is somewhere in that unit deck as the Dragon Queen lot and that if she reappears and is able to destroy the others, then he has got a newly son life. All is revealed and it feels like this, I mean, I say this a lot. I, I think I've said this in the past in other games, but it feels like it's coming to a head and it, this has got to finish, but maybe not. I'm, I'm, I'm afflicted by some, some strange curse, some strange disease, and so maybe I will be felled, um, not in, not in the literal sense, but I might be unable to, to complete it today, but we'll see. We're going to go for it. This could be the end of Zanziar, and then we'll be able to add another champion, uh, well, semi-finalist anyway, to our, our rack up above. We have three now. This would be the fourth. Pretty exciting stuff. Let's go to Zanziar. Chopper, Chopper, I feel like I start every video um, right after... Uh, you see my face with Chopper's face, and I think I probably have been doing that. Um, I've got I've gone ahead and done Chopper's turn. Uh, basically, what's happened is Derek the Dragon Warrior came down here and took this mine. So he now has two mines. That's one of Chopper's um, goals: is to control two mines. Let me zoom in on that for you, so you can see it. Love it when people talk about how they're zooming in when they're zooming in. Uh, um, <laughs> Let me zoom out. Let me point at this map. Um, I think it's just thinking aloud, right? I I had to do a little bit of thinking about what a card means in deciding what Chopper could do uh, next. So he has this this card that says plus one movement in force. Okay. Um, the way these rules are written, movement is written in a number of different ways. Uh, you're supposed to be able to move two hexes per turn, except if it's this, except if it's this, you know, except if it's a force, you can move one hex, I think. Uh, but then you get cards that give you plus one movement to a certain thing. And so I think what I determined, I think I, some of the later rules might, might do this, is um, they use movement points instead. So you have two movement points a turn, and planes cost one movement point, and forest costs two. So... If forest costs two, he just gets one, plus one movement point, right? So he's two to get here. He has one more, but he can't use it. If there had been a planes next to the forest, if Pulvis was in planes, he could then go there. And he does want to go to Pulvis. He wants to break up Largos. Um, ASAP. Whew. Jeez. It's getting down to it. And it is Sweet Pea's turn, and the game could actually be just about over. She has Grusberg, the Orc Shaman, and Rog here. My call on this actually was huge in terms of the game. I think I played it right. Um, I, I did a little looking back on last video, and the way I had thought it would work is that Chopper would be able to go to pull this. He actually can't. Um, I'm pretty confident about that. I think I was thinking in my my heat stewed mind brain that he would get a plus one for every forest but then yeah, it doesn't make any sense um i guess it, it could be that way I, I really don't know it could be that just forests are just like planes it's really hard as written but i'm going to play it like that uh, i don't know i don't know it just doesn't uh. anyway so she's going to go to Ciros, and we know as eric 
Fatland of Hagen, if she can control Hagen and at least one other Valor country, which she controls Largos, she's won the game. So a lot's going to depend on who pops up on Ceros. And I think I'm going to give everyone else one more chance, actually. Not not Chopper, but just so the turn ends evenly. Um, so Snugbug isn't, you know, doesn't lose a turn just because he, he, of the turn order. Uh, just doesn't feel fair. All right. Ceros. Let's see who it is. Just to go against Duke Cassius Erectus. We'll automatically levy a unit when he visits Bucked. Okay. And the uh, hardened opt Black Riders. That should not be a problem for. Um, I'll come back if it is. I just drew the city card. Generally, if you play this game with humans, you want to be aware of these cities before you do things. I don't ever play quite as well as I would in person when I play. Um, I know I have more time to maybe mull things over sometimes, but I don't always use it. Uh, anyway, this this kind of information is open, um, but she didn't check it when she was before she attacked. She would have done the same thing anyway. I don't think it would. I mean, this isn't this isn't a deal breaker. But my point is, Ciro's, um will give the defenders a, a bonus two d six on their combat for uh, for this fight if the attackers are attacking from land. Now she's going to have to, she could try to just do a, a straight diplomacy roll and avoid that. She kind of wants the sure thing. She wants to win the game. I think she's going to fight it out. Um, I don't know. That's, I, I think she's going to have to think about that. So that definitely makes diplomacy a lot more um, attractive than attacking. Uh, than before, you know, before, because if you attack two two units with four units, generally you're going to win, especially if one's a hero. Heroes or adventurers, adventurers are nice because they can move around and they have some special abilities, but they're generally not the best in a fight. Uh, this guy happens to have a good con score, which which could be dangerous. Uh, she'll have to think about that, and we'll come back. And we decided she is going to go for it. Let's roll to see what their defense bonus is, their bonus to the combat. They're going to get 7 bonus. That's that's pretty huge. So this guy's worth 16 and Duke Cassius Erectus is worth 10. That, you know, 7 I guess is the average you would get out of that. Um, that's still going to be big. All right, so she's going to start with magic with Grusberg the Orc Shaman. And that's 8 against 2. That's not bad. That's 6. That would have taken him out except he has that bonus. So now he has 4 left. I hate these little things. I'm going to stop it. Now these guys get to try to con. They're going to try and con the Hardenox Black Riders. This is going to be a big roll right here. Um, if, they, if they fail this, it, it could be a tough battle for Sweet Pea. All right, so they got four plus two. Not good. That's six against five. That's only a difference of one. That's still... He's going to... He's confused. He's going to stay out of this battle round. I guess that means he's, I don't know if that means if he's out of the combat or that means he's just so confused he can't defend himself. Um, let's say he's out of the combat round, so he kind of goes off to the side here and that lets these guys press. Um, 7 plus 1, that's 8 against, what's he at, he's at 10? So that's not enough to penetrate Duke Cassius Erectus. All right, we'll, we'll get reset up for another round. I think she's going to want to alter things, given the information. I totally forgot to do his con move. I'm sorry. should have done that first. Um, so Duke Cassius Erectus, he's going to try to con. Let's see. Who would be the best? He wants to... Um, he's got a three. I guess he'll go against the Nori Mercenaries. Three on two. Ooh, he got a four. Nori Mercenaries got a six. That's a minus two, the unit using con. Yeah, so not only did she win, she got him on her side permanently. Ciros has fallen due to words, some of their own words, and she has won the game. Now it's possible that Snugbug could also win the game. Uh, she needs to finish her turn first. I guess the madman is heading in to attack. So here's another case where you gotta make a judgment call. We have the madman here. The, at, the madman or in the scald can never participate in combat, yet it also notes that no Nora unit will ever harm a scald. So what they, I take that to mean is that he can't participate in the combat, but neither can Nori units from the other um, from the other side. So Snugbug had two Nori units along with the high priest of Vidalsis, which is who Sweet Pea is attacking. 
um, Sweet Viatus of Nixon Lake and the Nori Mercenary. So they're out. Um, so that's going to make the battle between the High Priest of Vidal Sis, um, some peasants, the Hort Orc Hunting Party, and this rather kind of poor fighting force because Prince Eric Fatland of Hagen is sitting out of it. Um, yeah, Sweet Pea isn't isn't dumb enough to, to risk him. Uh, before we do anything else though, the High Priest of Vidalsis is able to use diplomacy. I guess we'll go ahead and reveal these because one of these might add to diplomacy. No, they don't. Um, to just try to avoid it because why not. Um, so he's got a four against their five. Got a f that's nine against nine, so the the battle isn't even going to take place. And that made really good sense that that actually happened that way, because why would they, it would be pretty, I feel like it would be pretty easy to convince the troops not to fight, you would think, if the, um, the ruling class was not uh, physically in danger in the confrontation, which was the case there. Um, so that, that Eleth the healer, who looks to be something of a peasant. The shepherds and the peasants <laughs> didn't want to fight when the prince and their um, musician didn't want to. Uh, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. So here we go. Let's look for some treasures. Remember, Nidar, you can you can roll twice, and he'll be rolling with all his people. Does he have? He could break up into another group, couldn't he? Yeah, I think he'll put her in a separate group. And possibly get six different attempts. All right, we'll start with the high priest of Adalysis. Uh, how the roll works is it's con plus two because of Nidar's size three, um, and if that's five or higher, he gets an item. If it's a one, though, he loses control of the place, and then I don't think he's going to have a chance. All right, looking for a piece of the staff of Wormandalus. He already has one. He gets another one. He is one as well, and I don't know what I'm going to do then. Uh, okay, so we got an item, but the place is going to revolt. So if this is the staff of Wormandalus, Snugbug is a co-champion. It's not. It's Red Berries, and Snugbug's out of it. And thus, I guess one of these, if one of these guys could recapture the town, then the other one, well, let me give him a shot. Let's see what the units are. Um... Oh, I didn't shuffle them up. Alright, we'll do these two. Band of Eerie Rebels and Gory. So I guess he'll try to recapture the town with a straight diplomacy roll. That'd be the easiest way to do it. And then she'll look for items. He got a five. They got a four. So he succeeded. Alright, recaptured Nidar. I'm not sure if this is legal or not. Um, but they also joined his team. And then Sweet Viatus of Nixon Lake. You know, she could actually, he, he could have actually attacked and well, done well that way. But I think this is more of a uh, snug bug move. Um, so she's going to try to look. She has a con of four with that, that thing. So she's assured of getting an item. So we're pretty much just rolling to make sure she doesn't get a one. She's got a six total. That's bigger than five. Alright, so she gets two draws. If either of these is a staff, they're not. And that is going to be it. Sweet Pea has done it. And there we have it. That was an exciting game. It was a pretty, um, I think it was a game of a lot of like almost twists. A lot of ways where the game seemed like it could um, suddenly change. Like towards the end there, it seemed like Chopper could have totally busted up Sweet Pea's really dominant path to success. She really just, um, she, she almost took it. I have to say though, Snugbug was a lot closer <laughs> than it maybe looked like looking at the map. Uh, his goal was was purely material, so, you know, his reasoning was actually pretty firm, too. You know, here's the item deck. Some of those cards are already gone, but it's not a huge deck. I guess I could find out how many are in there. I could actually 
That's a pretty good, I just dropped all the cards, pretty good manifest of the yellow, 48 item cards. So there's 48, supposedly there's seven pieces of the Staff of Wormandalus in there, right? So seven out of 48. With the number of card draws he did, you'd think he would have gotten two, but he did not. Um, here's one, this is the Staff of Wormandalus. And if he had if he had just gotten a different here's another one, so the, I think they're all clustered in a different part of the the deck. Here's another one. Um, maybe someone can correct me on the probability on that, but it made sense to me without really thinking about it too hard. Um, and I'm sure it it made sense to Snugbug. Oh, here's two back to back. That might be they're pretty clustered here. Here's another one. I did shuffle this though. I swear. I did, I did, I did. Yeah, so, you know, if all he had to do was draw one, and he was, you, you know, especially with a dog, he was picking up uh, uh, card draws here and there, here and there, lots of them, and just none of them ended up being the staff of Wormandalus. He just was ditching all these items. If he, had, if he had tried to make use of those, he could probably have made his other goal. What, what was his other goal? Oh, control Vidal Sis and any two coastal towns. So he would have had to be a lot more military there. Um, just a, a note, if he, if he had gotten in a fight with Sweet Pea, um, he would have busted her up. He had this Dragon Helm, which gave him a Fireball power, Golden Ring of Essence, which gives a plus four to the magic of the Priest of Vidal Sis. Just a, just a special thing, that a special item just for this Priest of Vidal Sis. That would have given him nine magic, which is huge. And then this other piece of the Staff of Vermandalus, which would have given him plus one, so he would have had ten magic, been able to do Fireball, which is, like in most games, very potent. Could have backfired on him. I think Fireball makes it likely that it backfires, but um, still, if, she, if he had done that on uh, Eric Fatland, Sweet Pea would have been out of the game. Uh, so there was a lot of, lot of potential ways for her to, to slip up, for things to, to go against her. Um, the ghost of Tovard, you know, could have been out for her blood. It was really out for the dragon's blood. The dragon could have come back. dragon could have ended up confronting her first. That would have made things very different. And here's where we need to talk about Chopper. Poor Chopper. Ever the hero. The hero oftentimes doesn't actually get rewarded in the way you would want a hero to get rewarded. Uh, I think oftentimes the selfish one is the one who gets rewarded. Um, as long as they can have a nice smile while they do it. Perhaps, perhaps. But still, good competition between all three guys, or three um, individuals. Um, Sweet Pea definitely deserved it. She played well. Played well in both games. Um, kind of impetuous, I think. She, she took some risks that she didn't really need to. Uh, her teleportation attack on um, on Chopper there at the end could have been done handled much better. For example, if she teleported between him and Polvis, she wouldn't have had to like rely on speed uh, then so much to 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 get her victory. The the person could have intercepted and made it harder for him to get to Polvis, or they could have gone to Polvis and and um, helped buttress their forces there. Um, but a lot of fun playing Zanziar. I'm gonna miss playing the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament. I, I, as I explained in the last video, I'm gonna have to take a little hiatus. I think, um, just because I need the table space, as while I have this Origins game going. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all um, appreciated Zanziar. Messy game. Definitely got to make some calls on it. Uh, I, from what I understand, they're reworking it even now. The rules. It seems like they're constantly in reiterations. And I think that's nice. Um, I don't like to, I like to go off the rules that I have. I don't like to print out new rules. Um, I don't like to read off of a screen. Uh, it's hard on my brain. So I went with these for most, most part and just kind of monkeyed with it. Um, it's definitely a game where you can play with the system along with playing with the game. I think most games are like that though, if you, if you want them to be. 